The residents come to blows when New Ben and Jericho go head to head in an hour here on ITV4. That's coming up after we relive the best of yesterday's action in British Touring Car Championship highlights. <laughs> Putting you behind the wheel. High Q sponsors the BTCC. After seven months on the road, around nine UK circuits and almost a thousand miles of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, the British Touring Car Championship has reached the final weekend of the season. Defending champion Fabrizio Giovinardi has led the way ever since the first meeting right here at Brands Hatch back in March. But as we've seen so far this year, anything can happen. So will he manage to hold on to his lead and this trophy? Or will Jason Plato score an improbable victory in this Seat Championship swan song? Giovinardi, championship leader, championship leader, his big rival, Jason Plato, Jason Plato, Jason Plato, Jason Plato. And they've done it, they've done it, they've done it. The British Touring Car Championship, championship, championship. That's the mind killer. Here comes the Italian, here comes Fabrizio Giovinardi. What a beautiful manoeuvre. It's Fabrizio Giovinardi who wins for Vauxhall. Off goes Plato. Could this be the championship ebbing ever further away? Sometimes the luck's with you, sometimes it's not. Contact, contact. It's a dirty way to fight. Giovinardi got all out of shape. Giovinardi's gone off, he's got a puncture. He's still on very long shot. If Jason Plato wins, he needs Gio to have a non-finish, really. Fear is the We've got to keep our fingers crossed that my Italian friend has a bad day. This could be crucial. Giovinardi's got in front. How did he do that? Plato now's got his work cut out with his big rival right ahead. <laughs> It's going to be a great fight till the end. Fight till the end. Fight till the end. I expect Jason Plato performance. performance. Hopefully, I'll be the one lifting the trophy. Lifting the trophy. Lifting the trophy. Fear is the mind killer. So Fabrizio Giovinardi enjoys a 44-point lead over Jason Plato as we start Judgment Day, but with only 52 points available, it really is Geo's to lose. The battle for third is considerably closer with independent drivers Colin Turkington and Matt Jackson separated by only three points. And those two drivers are fighting it out for the independent title, with Colin enjoying a 22-point advantage over Matt, and Adam Jones still mathematically in contention, but a further 18 points behind. Right, well, it's a big weekend for both Vauxhall and for Fabrizio Giovinardi, but since the last race at Silverstone, Giovinardi's preparation has included a 23-hour flight to Melbourne in Australia for the latest round of their V8 supercar series. We've been following him to see what went on. It's endurance time. I'm straight to make the long distance race for Triple Eight. It's a new experience, it's a new challenge. I can have two things in the same time. Go to visit Australia and uh, have a good fun with the V8. My teammate, it will be my co-driver, my pilot, my, <laughs> my mentor. <laughs> the only biggest problem is the translation between me and him. <laughs> We're underway at Phillip Island. Simply amazing. What a day! This world-class circuit has seen it all. I spent 15 days in there. It's not so easy as I expect. It was a good experience, good fun. More or less, it was a holiday. Welcome to my house. Hello. I'm in Italy for a few days. I have just the time to remake the bags, to change the clothes. And now let me show my house. This is my bedroom, bathroom, the unfinished bathroom. Unfortunately, I didn't spend a lot of time because I had to race, so you can see work in progress. Before to go to Australia, my target was try to make the best before to get the last race. Because, you know, you have to go to Australia, it's a long journey. You can be uh, tired when you, can, when you come back. With a gap to play, I can be more relaxed. This is my son. <laughs> Luca! <laughs> ah, fuck! Hey, what well, are my study? 
is the place I spent time to book the fly, to just try to organize my life, where I was with Moher. And here, the BTCC winner, the Vauxhall. <laughs> the first championship, the second one has to come. It's another title, it's very important for me, for the Vauxhall, for everyone that working very hard uh, around me. Uh, in the end of the day, uh, I'm just looking for another, another, another challenge. This is the place to live for me, is my opinion. Confusion, my, my car, the next job. This is my project for the winter. I love to build, I love to project models, and then I love to create models. You have to um, understand when it's time to try to win and when it's time to try just to bring point back. Is what I've done. I finished all the races. Let's go. Go to the kitchen. Are you looking forward for this? Ravioli in zuc. And here the champagne for the victory. Cross finger. Vogliamo da mangiare. Vogliamo da mangiare. This is Jason. I'm joking. It's a nice guy. I love Jason. I love Jason means is a uh, guy that keep uh, in, keep yourself very very um, uh, under pressure, and to be under pressure is for me is the best. The swimming pool. He has to try to win all the three races, and uh, have to be really unlucky. He has not a lot of chance, but he will try to do that. I think he don't want to just make me that just make my life so easy. I think. I will do it because I want it. Well, Fabrizio will need all the energy he can get from that pasture if he's to wrap up the championship in the first race of the day here at Brands Hatch. Find out if he can do it after the break. You see. Welcome back to Brands Hatch. Fabrizio Giovinardi has qualified in 11th place, and right in front of him in 10th is Jason Plato. And it's an understandably downbeat Seat team after the parent company, Seat UK, announced earlier that they were pulling out of all their motorsport activities, leaving Jason and his co driver, Darren Turner, looking to find a drive for 2009. Stephen Jelly is on pole for the first race of the day here at Brands, and we'll go up to our commentators, Tim Harvey, and first, Ben Edwards. The grid for the first race of the day. See Stephen Jelly on his first ever pole position. Another BMW alongside, that's Matt Jackson. Then Darren Turner in the Seat and Matt Neal in the top Vauxhall. Gordon Shedden lines up fifth for Team Halfords. Colin Turkington is sixth for Team RAC. Then it's Rob Collard and Adam Jones on the next row, followed by Stephen Kane. And there's Jason Plato down in 10th, one place ahead of big rival Fabrizio Giovinardi, with Tom Onslow Cole in there in 12th place. Tom Chilton's a long way down, despite being fast in free practice, he had a problem in qualifying. Andrew Jordan is with him on that seventh row, then it's Jason Hughes and Michael Doyle, John George and Martin Bell on row number nine. And then towards the back, row 10 sees Alan Taylor and Mike Jordan, row 11 Chris Stockton and Harry Volkard, and at the back it's Erkut. And we're all set for this first race of the day, round 28 of the British Touring Car Championship. Lights out, away we go, and Stephen Jelly makes a great start from pole position. Matt Neal trying to squeeze down on Shedden and had to back out of it. Thankfully, they didn't make contact. Matt Neal very slow away in the first of the Vauxhalls on the grid. The Overshire Bernardi getting away. Jason Plato going around the outside of Fadakil Bend. He's trying to get around Adam Jones. Hasn't quite finished it yet, but he's going to try and finish it as they come up the hill to the hairpin. But Jones is on his inside. Giovinardi's just tucked in behind that little group. Up front, Stephen Jelly leads. Matt Jackson pushing him down the hill into Graham Hill Bend. But Jason Plato is trying to pick his way through here and trying to find a way past cars without any damage being incurred. Behind him, in fact, it is Tom Onslo Cole and then Giovinardi. And then, no, it's Matt Neal, isn't it, back down there. And Giovinardi uh, behind Adam Jones at the moment, a little bit of a lock-up. You can see Plato two cars ahead of Giovinardi at this stage, Tim. Well, Plato's got one thing on his mind, and that is a charge to the front. But this is very much a BMW circuit. There's two across the line at the front. There were five in the top ten of qualifying. Matt Jackson's taken the lead. Matt Jackson takes it from Stephen Jelly. BMW's one and two, but it's it's Matt Jackson in front, Jenny in second, Turner in third, Giovinardi in the gravel, Giovinardi's in the gravel at Panagil Bend, he's got it back on, my goodness, 
He's had scored points at every race this year, and suddenly he's off in the gravel. Jason Hughes and John George have made contact as well. Well, that'll be a safety car for sure, but Giovinardi needs to regroup. He was trying to pass Adam Jones, and of course, he's finished every single race uh, for contact. contact this year. Chris Stockton got punted, and he was just behind Giovinardi at that point. That turn has come up. Stephen Jenny's lost one. He's lost two places. Are we going to see the safety car? Yes, we are. And they're racing back to the line. They race to the line before they get picked up by the safety car and it looks as though it's going to be Matt Jackson who leads as they cross the line from Turner in second Gordon Shedden now third Stephen Jelly fourth Rob Collard in fifth then Turkington in sixth ahead of Stephen Kane now Jason Plato is in eighth place where is Giovinardi he's all the way down in 14th position let's take a look at some of the replays here Tim this is the change of the lead as Stephen Jackson there uh, sorry Matt Jackson just up behind Stephen Jelly yeah that's going through clearways that's going through clearways and clearly at this stage, Matt Jackson's got his tyres up to temperature a lot quicker because he manages to pull out of uh, clearways on the inside. And uh, this was Giovinardi going off. Oh, he gets a slide. Well, we didn't see perhaps the start of it, but he and Adam Jones both running wide. Yeah, and there was Tom Chilton behind him. Did he get a tap from Tom Chilton? Yeah, it looks oh. like somebody tapped him, didn't they? Ready for the restart. The safety car's coming in. So we're all set now for the race to get underway, and it's Matt Jackson absolutely breathtaking once again from the youngster. Matt Jackson leading, Turner in second, Gordon Shedden in the Team Halfords car third, Stephen Jelly fourth, and then coming through is Rob Collard, Turkington down there. Now, watch for Giovinardi. He's got to do something over the next few laps. He's OK at the moment, but he can't, of course, depend on that because presumably Plato's going to pick up some more places here. Yeah, I'm sure Plato will. I mean, Matt Jackson is absolutely flying, and don't forget, he is very keen on trying to win this in Independence title, he's just slightly behind Turkington in, so he's going about it in the best possible way. Problems for Jelly on that back straight, he slowed right down, and several cars all going past him. I don't know what happened to him there, but Stephen Jelly really slowing down, and the pole sitter in trouble. Now, further back, let me tell you that uh, Giovinardi's just lost another place. Look at Plato, he has uh, uh, Stephen That's Kane and Turkington side by side, and I think Kane's got through. Yeah, he has, he's got past, so he's got past the Team RAC BMW. Here comes Plato, Plato on the grass, and in the background, Chilton getting very out of shape. Contact, I don't know if there was with the Fox or perhaps Monslo Cole. Meanwhile, Giovinardi is down in 14th place now, so Giovinardi really struggling in this race. It could be the first race this year that he's not in the points. Here comes Plato now, trying to get past. Colin Turkington, a winner here earlier this season. Turkington, but Plato a bit slow through paddock. Well, Plato taking the tie line, the Seat very good over the curbs, and, so, and Jason Plato using the inside curve, which is quite an aggressive one at paddock, to try and shorten the line here. But it's got this real end of term feel about it this first race of the last meeting with everybody going for broke. It is great stuff, isn't it? And in the background, I've just seen Jones get past Michael Doyle, who's been running well. Uh, Doyle is now the one ahead of Fabrizio Giovinardi, by the way, but Giovinardi's still way outside the point. Plato needs to pick off a few more here, though. He's got to try and get in the top four to have any chance of keeping this championship alive. Michael Doyle ahead of Giovinardi runs over the curb on the exit. Giovinardi will be a little wary of that. Michael Doyle, a real young superstar in a way. He's, he's run this family-run team. He's going to be passed, though, by Giovinardi, and he does a good job there, does uh, Michael Doyle. He was going to fight, but he wasn't going to do anything silly. Now look at this battle for third now, as Rob Collard goes on the attack, and he's down the inside of Gordon Shedden, and he's through. Good move there from Rob Collard. I tell you what, Stephen Kane's not far behind him. Shedden's trying to come back up the inside. Here's this good stuff from the Scots as well, and Stephen Kane right behind. Look at the sandwich as they come around the hairpin. Wonderful racing, but now Collard's got the inner line, and Kane's going to try and follow. No, he can't do it. So Collard does move up into third, fourth now for Shedden, and fifth for Stephen well, Kane. Well, a great battle there, and a real peach of an overtake from uh, from uh, Collard there. It's not easy to pass up the inside into Paddock because it's a blind approach and the car goes light on the inside. We just managed to get it done. Yeah, he's a bit wide turning into clearways, but actually he seemed to get away with it. And it's now Shedden under attack once again from Stephen Kane. And Kane now trying to line him up for Paddock Hill Bend, but I doubt if Gordon's going to see it happen twice. Is he going to leave the door open? No, he doesn't. Well, in fairness, I mean, uh, Shedden didn't defend the inside, and it looked like Kane had a good run onto that uh, onto that straight and uh, didn't quite pull the move that... Uh, oh, he's going... 
looking up the inside. There's a little bit of a push, a little bit of push. That will probably get the job done. Very nice indeed. These two motorbase cars, well, have they found this performance? Dave Bartram must be leaping up and down with excitement because he loves to race and he loves to race well at nowhere else than Brands Hatch. A fantastic performance. And meanwhile, Jason Plato is trying to get fast. Oh, and Collard's gone wide, and Kane is through on the back straight. Yeah. Collard ran wide out of Graham Hill Bend. Well, we saw the start of that, and Kane was just looking down, and whether he put enough pressure on the Collard to get through, I don't know. But they're very close behind uh, Darren Turner in front, so Kane wants to keep his progress going. Plato's up the inside as we come across the start-finish line. Yeah, this is an opportunity. He's through, and it's a fairly straightforward one in the end there for Jason Plato. He takes the place from Gordon Shedden, so he's into sixth place, and Shedden now under attack from Matt Neal as well. Matt Neal follows through, and there's Tom Chilton, his teammate, and Tom's not taking taking any prisoners, squeezes right past Shedden at the same time. Yeah, well, we said uh, we said Tom was going to be quick, and Shedden clearly got a pace problem here. This is on board with Plato alongside. The, the door is wide open. Plato's got enough speed down the straight to get the job done nice and early without any panic late braking. So up front, uh, meanwhile, Matt Jackson is still leading this race, but the battle for second is really hotting up now. The battle for second, watch it, Darren Turner under threat from Stephen Kane in the BMW, then Rob Collard, and chasing him is Colin Turkington, as Turkington's car really seems to be working now in the latter stages of this race. So Darren Turner finds his mirrors somewhat filled with that BMW of Stephen Kane. Well, how big a risk? Oh, there's contact, there's contact, and Kane's alongside, he's gonna take it. He's into second. Well, that's Clay Kane's perfect place. Is that Turner's drop back? Turner's got a problem. Now that looks, I don't know what happened, it looks suspiciously like the engine problem they had before. Oh, contact between Matt Neal and Darren Turner down the hill. They just about get away with it. I thought that was going to end in tears. But as you say, Darren Turner, although now the car's yeah. working again. Yeah, that was a team tactic. He was clearly just dropping back to let Plato through for extra points and then having to fight back. OK, and that nearly did end in tears. Yeah, that's right. But Turner's got himself back in front of Matt Neal. And what does that mean about Jason Plato? Well, it means he's now in fifth place so he's behind all the BMWs that are leading this race Scott Dennis keeping an eye on what's going on can their tactics help here maybe there it was Turner backing off yeah he's backing off waiting 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 for Plato and trying to desperately get back inside there um, and stop Neil getting through it worked out quite well because Neil then had to go around the outside which is the longer harder route and Neil has got past Turner yes he has Matt Neil has gained that place so he's into sixth position now ahead of Darren Turner but we're on the final lap here, and it's running out of time for Sayat and for Jason Plato. This is the replay of Matt Neal and Darren Turner. There was a little light contact, and Matt Neal slipped through on the inside. Yeah, Matt Neal's favourite overtaking place. Here we go, though. Matt Jackson is coming out of clearways for the final time. It's going to be victory for Matt Jackson. Another win, back-to-back. -back. He won the wet race at Silverstone. Second place goes to Stephen Kane. Watch them across the line now. It's Collard third. Fourth place goes to Colin Turkington. Fifth place goes to Jason Plato. It's not enough for Plato. Fabrizio Giovinardi is going to take the title, finishing in 14th place. 14th position for Giovinardi. First race, he's not been in the points, but he's taken the title. Well, how ironic is that? The first race, he's not in the points, and it's the race he wins the championship. So Fabrizio Giovinardi has done it again. Congratulations to him and the Vauxhall Vectra team. He might have done it with a whimper rather than a bang by finishing 14th, but we'll hear from Fabrizio and see the penultimate round of the championship after the break. Welcome back to Brands Hatch, where Fabrizio Giovinardi has done it at the first race of the meeting, but by finishing 14th, Plato could finish no higher than fifth, and that means that Giovinardi is the 2008 British Touring Car Champion. Just a confirmation of the result of the first race, Matt Jackson leads home a BMW 123 from Stephen Kane and Rob Collard, and in the final standings, with two races still to go, Fabrizio Giovinardi leads by 38 points, and with only 34 remaining, mathematically, Giovinardi cannot be caught. Well, here he is, the 2008 British Touring Car Champion, and he's looking very pleased with himself. Your, your emotions, Fabrizio, right now? Yeah, obviously, we've done good effort all through the, the Vox of the team, and uh, it was a great job, I think. Uh, they give me a reliable car, so it's why we finished all the races. Not just today, it's really unusual. 
race is not the best uh, way to finish. But anyway, we won, so we can we can ask anything more. You won the championship. You haven't won that many races. Have you ever won a championship by not winning so many races? Jason's won more races than you. Yeah, it's true. He, in the end of the season, uh, they came really strong. I think uh, he won a lot. But you know, as I said before, uh, I had a real car, and uh, we scored all the points. We, underst we understood immediately in the beginning of the season that it was more tough championship with more cars, with more uh, strong drivers. So we had to say just keep keep going, keep going, take take points. And when it's time to win, win. And when it's time to wait, wait. Is why. Yeah. And were you ever worried in the middle of the summer, from Snetterton onwards, when the Seat Diesel had the fastest car? Were you ever worried? That maybe it wouldn't happen this year. Uh, yeah, I'm, I've been uh, honestly, I've been uh, worried until um, uh, Silverstone because uh, in the first race he scored uh, the pole position, the fastest lap he won, and they finished uh, five, six. So I've lost 11 points. So in that way, I could come inside the brand's edge with really few points. So I was, uh, I was worried. Uh, keep concentration, try to do the maximum. And here we are. Our season came on song too, too late. You know, ha had we started. As we've begun at Snetterton, then it could have been a very different story. But as it was, you know, we, we've had a brilliant second half of the year and one which we should all be proud of. Um, but, you know, just a bit too late, I'm afraid. Congratulations, boys. First double podium for your team. Uh, I know the team are absolutely delighted. and You've been spraying each other with champagne. The car has been absolutely fantastic all weekend so far. So you're delighted for, for Stephen and delighted for the team and all our sponsors come out, Susan Whitmore's. It's been a great day so far. Well, Stephen, you're just going to take advantage and get on that podium, no matter what, aren't you? The team gave me a brilliant car, and I'm just delighted for the team. Both of us on the podium is what the team managers wanted the whole year, so hopefully he'll be going home smiling this weekend. OK, well, it's still all to play for in the Independent Drivers' Championship, and it's Colin Turkington who leads Matt Jackson in that one, but Jackson is on pole position for race two of the meeting, and we can join Ben Edwards with the rest of the grid. So the grid for the second race sees Matt Jackson on pole with Stephen Kane alongside, then Rob Collard and Colin Turkington on the second row. Jason Plato and Matt Neal are together on row three, followed by Darren Turner and Tom Chilton. Then it's Tom Onsvo Cole, Andrew Jordan and Adam Jones lines up 11th. Mike Jordan is in 12th place. But then as we go back, Behind Gordon Shedden should be Fabrizio Givinardi, but he's got problems. He's not going to make the start of this one. Michael Doyle and Harry Volkhard are next up on row eight. Martin Bell and Erkut are on row number nine. And then as we get towards the back, it's Alan Taylor and Chris Stockton. Stephen Jelly, well done after those gearbox problems earlier. Jason Hughes alongside, and John George starts at the back. As the engine revs begin to build, wait for those lights. Lights out, away we go, it's Jackson versus Kane. Kane knocks her well off the line and his teammate Rob Collard slips up the inside to take second place. Great start for Collard, he is quick off the line, but as you said, Plato has started well, he's up to fourth. Is he already? No, that's, uh, yes, coming through, it is Plato in fourth and right with him is Matt Neal. So it was a poor start from Turkington, he's the one that's lost out. The Team RAC BMW's lost a couple of places. Yeah, unusual that. And Collard, a really good starter, he was always a great starter in the front-wheel drive cars, but he's uh, taken that skill over to rear wheel drive Jackson's trying to make the escape um, and oh, Kane we've got a fox along oh, very ball. sideways just saved it didn't he that's where he had a big accident earlier this year and he just got out of it well that was immediately what I was thinking as they came alongside side by side with Adam Jones I was thinking don't go left always oh, fighting back straight away yeah he is having a go but uh, can he get through I don't think so but that was a great piece of recovery from Tom Onslow Cole just about managed it to save it Tom Onslow, Cole under threat, Adam Jones is right there as well, and so is Ford Chen Chen on the inside of Jones. Jones gets squeezed out a little bit, Shen should have the line up into the hairpin now, and he should be through, but Jones is not one to give up, he always fights back, can't quite do it on the exit of the hairpin, and they're still side by side as they come down the hill, but it's Shen with the advantage. Yeah, good racing that through, Paddock Hill Bend, the car's just on 110 miles an hour of, uh, on the approach there, very, very quick corner. Matt Jackson still our race leader, one and a half seconds. He has a lead by and set fastest lap last time around, so it's looking good for Matt Jackson to try and take the double victory. He's never done that before. And meanwhile, Mike Jordan and uh, Michael Doyle having a good old dice just outside the points. There's the race leader. Open up the gap over Collard, Kane, and then Jason Plato sitting there in fourth place, desperate to get some podiums here for Seat on the final outing in the British Touring Car Championship. He's got Matt Neal directly behind him and then Colin Turkington who went better in the latter stages of the first race but they did make some changes to that car to try and make it quicker from the off he didn't get off the line too well and so now he's got to work at it again yeah, Plato looking back on board with Plato he's got a little gap there 
as he challenges hard to try and get past uh, Kane. It's, uh, it's Neil that's behind him, as he was all the way through the first race. They didn't make any contact then, fortunately, but uh, if they carry on running from the side close this close, it's only a matter of time, perhaps. Matt Jackson is totally in command at the moment in the BMW leading this race and uh, really has been another impressive showing once again from the youngster driving for the BMW dealer team UK but here we are for Turkington very close to the back of that Vauxhall Vectra the Vectra has been such a strong car hasn't it and there's Matt Neal his favorite move up the inside and he's through is he he's got past Plato well we said he likes going up the inside there and Plato's lost two places in one yeah well he might lose another as well has Plato got a problem I think Plato's got a problem ah uh, that's what it now, is well I, I alluded to it perhaps in the first race wrongly when Darren Turner pulled back, but that 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 looks like, well, that's a terminal problem. I wonder if it is that engine problem. Well, you wonder, don't you? It was so sudden there, and it may have already started just as uh, Matt Neal went on the attack because he didn't seem to defend it as vigorously as he normally would have. We gather that Plato has a problem with his steering. Now, that's an interesting one. Well, it could probably possibly be the, uh, the hydraulic uh, steering pump, which uh, in that car with a, a lot of weight on the front end and uh, is going to make it undrivable without the pump working. Well, that's very disappointing for Sayat. Four non-finishes this year for a variety of reasons, not, not uh, all mechanical, but they have had that misfire, which was a, a cause of two effectively non-finishes. Uh, he's been involved in one accident that took him out as well and he had an exclusion as well. Turkington at the moment is still just leading in the independence points, but it's really coming down just three points. If they finish where they are now, look, the gap between them will be only three points for the independence win with one race to go. That's going to be fun. Look at this. This happened a moment ago. Yeah, would, was Jones had actually outbraked himself a fraction and was in wide and then was obviously trying to close the door that Jelly was already looking into and Matt Neal looking up the inside of Stephen Kane. Kane very sensibly goes out wide and will now use the extra traction to try and hopefully get across in front. I don't know that he will. He, can he shut the door? The Vauxhall's a very strong car on the straight. He was very careful. Remember, he had a big shunt against the pit wall earlier this year with Andrew Jordan, so he was careful not to shut the door, but Neal's through, and Turkington's going to follow. Turkington's going to squeeze past as well, and you have to wonder, that accident that Stephen Kane had on the top straight made him very cautious there on shutting the door on Matt Neal. Yeah, there was actually a point where he was slightly in front, and he probably could have come over, but I'm sure you're right. He thought better of it, bearing in mind the, uh, the accident he had before. And... Uh, I, I did Rob Collard a disservice because Rob has actually maintained his pace really well and stayed in front of Kane and uh, in fact he's uh, got a little gap on that group. Well, Turkington, that will help Turkington, it's taken him past another independent, you're looking at the replay from on board Turkington's point of view and he was just put, in, put himself in the right place at the right time, didn't he? Yeah, well once uh, Matt Neal was in up the inside there was no way that Stephen Kane could shut the door so it was relatively simple. Now we've got uh, Janie down in the pits with Jason Plato. Jason, such disappointment for you. Can you explain what happened? Do you know something to do with the steering, I understand, from Scott Dennis? Yeah, we um, we, th we think the rack got that da has been da damaged when, when Matt uh, came in the side side of me. So yeah, that's it's game over. You can't steer the beast. Is it something that can be fixed for the final race? Oh, absolutely. I mean, well, I think I think it is a steering rack. But I think you, you, I mean, they can do, do that. Matt Neal's going to go for his move up the inside. Classic Matt Neal. He's up the inside. Has he done it? Not quite. Get sideways. Banging, banging. I wouldn't want to start crazy. Remember, these two had a huge accident together going into Paddock Hill Bend a few years ago. They don't want to repeat that one. And look, Turkington's going to try and do what he did before and sneak down the inside as well. He's done it. Perfect. Yeah. Carbon copy manoeuvre. You could uh, almost put your money, your mortgage on Matt Neal sliding up the inside there at Clearways and uh, a carbon copy of the move they made on Stephen Kane a few laps earlier. Those motorbase cars definitely struggling to carry the ballast, but they're still in with a shout of scoring useful points. But let's just take a look at this again, Tim. Yeah, Matt Neal cuts the first curve very sharply to get a good run across the second one, up the inside, little bit of contact. Stephen Kane, I mean, Rob Collard has to steer wide to avoid a spin, and uh, Matt Neal's cleaning up the inside with Turkington straight there behind him. That's inside the... Uh the team, Matt Jackson's team, they're all holding their breath. Two wins on the same day, be a first for Matt and thoroughly deserved as well. But I think he's just bringing his car home. I think so. He should have enough of an advantage. He's in. Ah, puncture for Turner. Oh. Left front puncture. All the, oh. the favourites are in trouble today. Yeah. What's going on? Now, that, that's something you don't often see at Brands, but it's a, de 
it's to do with the heat, uh, it's to do with the, uh, the the pressure on the tyres, maybe a little bit too much camber, I don't know, but it's very extreme conditions, and the left front uh, is the one that's taking all the damage around here. Yeah, indeed. Look, oh, this here. Kane getting close to uh, Collard. Yeah, absolutely. So that's uh, that little inter-team rivalry that's going on between Rob Collard and Stephen Kane is still going on. And this is for fourth place. And uh, Kane, oh, they make contact. You don't want to do that, boys. You do not want Dave Bartram's anger on you. And so you don't, certainly don't want him sitting on you, which is what he threatened earlier if they took each other off. And catching them both is Tom Chilton. So he might take advantage of this in the closing moments. But we are on the last lap here. And it does look as though Matt Jackson is going to take victory. He's had enough of an advantage. And Matt Jackson surely is going to take the win. Here he is. And it's going to be Matt Jackson's fifth win of the season. That's the same number of wins as Giovinardi's taken this year. What a fantastic end to the year. Matt Jackson is having another victory his second win at brands today double win second place goes to matt neil turkington is third collard just beats kane chilton finishes in sixth andrew jordan finishes in seventh ahead of onslow cole in the end and let's just take a look back at matt jackson there crossing the line two out of two great he loves his racing he's a real racer uh, someone that gets stuck in he's passionate about his team he's passionate about his car and he's passionate about racing and uh, that's fantastic to see so Matt Jackson wins the race, Matt Neal second, Turkington in third, and then uh, Collard and Kane, the two motorbase cars, Tom Chilton sixth, Andrew Dorden seventh, ahead of Onslow Cole with Shedden and Mike Jordan completing the top ten. So uh, father and son Jordans both into the top ten there and uh, scoring useful points. Now just outside the points, Adam Jones and Stephen Jelly, who had a wonderful dice all the way through, and look, they were separated by less than a tenth really at the end of it. Harry Volcard and Jason Hughes finished 13th and 14th, John George on 15th and Martin Bell, Eckert, uh, but then we had few who didn't make it to the end, I'm afraid. Darren Turner, Michael Doyle, Jason Plato, and of course Fabrizio Giovinardi never even made the start. Just explain how, how you're not actually ahead of Turkington in the independent standings, first of all. I think uh, Mr. Gow's probably the best one to explain that. It's, um, <laughs> you know, we we're ahead of him in the, in the main championship, but second in the independents. Uh, it's a funny point scoring system, but, uh, you know, it's still mathematically possible. Uh, we can do it in the next race, so um, fingers crossed we can get there. You know, the, the, the gap is down now. I'm, I'm not sure how many it is, but, um, you know, with the reverse grid, there'll be a few more independents through to the front. So, uh, but, you know, hopefully I have a good enough car, I think, to come through again, you know. If, another 27 kilos so it's okay matt clearways that's your place isn't it always has been always will <laughs> i suppose no, it's just the car felt great i had to pick and choose my moments because uh, colin was waking there like a vulture to pounce at any time so I was, I was mindful where he was well in the draw for race three of the day tom onslow cole came up lucky Vauxhall at least hoping to score one win this weekend but can matt jackson make it a hat trick join us after the break Well, welcome back to a sunny brand hatch. Fabrizio Giovinardi's car is fixed, I'm happy to say, but he does start race three of the day from the back of the grid. All eyes, though, will be on the front in the Independence Championship between Jackson and Turkington. We'll go back to Ben and Tim. The grid for the final race of the year sees Tom Onslow Cole on pole, Andrew Jordan alongside, then it's Tom Chilton and Stephen Kane, with Rob Collard, his teammate, behind in fifth place, and Colin Turkington starting in sixth. Seventh on the grid is Matt Neal. He's got Matt Jackson right there with him. Then it's Gordon Shedden and Mike Jordan starting from 10th. Adam Jones is 11th. Stephen Jelly is in 12th place. 13th on the grid, Harry Volkard. Then it's Jason Hughes, followed by John George and Martin Bell. Eckert lines up on row nine with Darren Turner. Of course, he had a puncture earlier. And then look who's next up. Michael Doyle has Jason Plato alongside. And there's Fabrizio Giovinardi, our new champion, all the way back on row 11 with Alan Taylor. And Chris Stockton brings up the rear. We're all set for the final race of the season. Away we go, an off-pole position, Tom Onslow Cole, but here comes Tom Chilton. Tom Chilton's made a brilliant start, so has Stephen Kane up into third, but it's Chilton that leads into Paddock Hill Bend. Well, this could be a story indeed. He was very determined to get to Janey on the grid, and just look at him go now. Up the hill he goes, and it's Chilton leading with Onslow Cole in second, and then Stephen Kane. Well, Chilton was quickest in one of the free practice, third in one of the others. His meeting has been compromised by a poor qualifying due to a broken suspension damper but now he's got a great opportunity zero ballast out in front and behind there's a bit of bumping and boring going on Gordon Shetton ends up on the grass but he gets it back on and at the back Plato and Giovinardi have not made huge progress yet 
somebody, oh, we've got a big shot, John George. John George has rolled that car on the approach in the 30s, and that is going to be the safety car called for. This is uh, Giovinardi's on board, and already you can see the bunching in front. Uh, John George's car is two cars in front. He moves back across the front of Plato's car and gets turned into the wall in exactly the same way that Onslow Cole did earlier in the year. In fact, Plato was looking to get it's down the inside. It's Turner. It was Turner, was I think. Was it Turner? Yeah, you're right. I apologise. It was... Oh, that's a big roll. Big roll. The impact being absorbed by the car, of course. But I think that was, that was a case of the two of them moving in the same direction at the same time. The good news is John George is out of the car. Here we go then, the safety car's about to head into the pits and uh, already look how close Tom Onslow Cole is, the back of Tom Chilton is going to try and make a good restart but Chilton is quick out of clearways and we're racing once again with Chilton in the Team Alpha Tonda looking for his own first win in three years is Chilton, it's been a long time but we've got a long way to go in this race for him to hold on to it. Onslow Cole in second, then it's Stephen Kane in third place. Plato chasing after Mike Jordan. We think this uh, could well be Mike Jordan's uh, final race as a touring car driver. I think he's going to still be very involved, though, uh, through the efforts of his son. And uh, Mike, always a hard racer. He won't make it. Oh, Giovinardi's got up the inside of Plato. Right behind them, Giovinardi's dived up the inside. He's done a Matt Neal on Jason Plato. And remember, it broke the steering on Plato's car when it happened earlier. Yeah, uh, well, well, look at Plato down the straight. He's got the... Got the Juice wound up on that uh, turbo diesel and Giovinardi fighting back into paddock. He tried to get up the inside, but Plato will have enough speed up the hill to hold him off. Yeah, that was very interesting, wasn't it? The, the Seat came back at him, and whether Giovinardi uh, thought, oh, maybe it was a bit un unrealistic, but I don't know, Darren Turner's right behind him now as well, so he's going to have to be very careful because the other Seat is right on his rear bumper. Yeah, that certainly wasn't uh, Giovinardi conceding the place back, it was just the, uh, the horsepower of the, uh, the Seat that got away from him. So Giovinardi's going to have to try and do it again, but uh, having surprised Plato once, will he do it again? No, he's not close enough this time, but he really uses that tight line, little touch, little touch, Plato has to correct. You can see the opposite lock on, and uh, the Vauxhall's still not quite there. Plato's able to, to shut him off. Yeah, I think Giovinardi's playing with him a little bit, isn't he? Just sort of a little run into the back, nothing too serious, nothing too aggressive, but uh, just, uh, just playing with him, really. Good stuff. Final outing for the Seat team as a manufacturer team. I'm sure we'll still see plenty of Seats out there next year in private hands. It's a fast car, but as the works team, this is their last outing, and they'll want to try and keep that pesky Giovinardi behind them, well, at least between them. Plato wants to stay ahead of him, and uh, a wonderful show being put on. Adam Jones in the meanwhile, with Stephen Jelly alongside. And all oh, there's contact a little bit between them. Did they get round? No, they didn't. Jones is in the barrier. Or oh, possibly a, a mirror image of the John George accident, I fear. Not as bad, fortunately. And meanwhile, Giovinardi and Plato side by side again. <laughs> He's got the inside line now, but look at the speed of the Seat. This diesel power just, again, powers him away from Giovinardi. And he's going to watch out now for Darren Turner trying to do likewise. Will he ever look down the inside into Paddock? No, he won't. Patrizia, that's Fabrizio's wife watching this and enjoying it. And this is turning into a real tussle. And they're not even fighting for points here, remember. They're not in the points yet. They're in 12th, 13th and 14th places. Oh. Now, that, that was interesting because Jelly ran very wide there and Jordan went through. Yes, that's right. So now they've got Jordan, uh, sorry, Mike Jordan at the head of the cube. Giovinardi's getting alongside Plato. Here we go. On board with Giovinardi. He's going to have the inside line into Surtees. He's turning in and he's got past Plato this time. But Plato will no doubt try and go. Oh, he's up the inside now, Giovinardi of Jelly. And he's done it. He's got past Jelly as well. Yeah, that was good racecraft. Jelly obviously had a problem and uh, Giovinardi seized on the moment to pass in a place where Plato couldn't respond and then got past Jelly very quickly. Oh, and is that Turner going Past it on is the outside. Plato seems to be struggling a bit. Maybe the bit of contact there has damaged the car. I'm not sure. But uh, Turner has passed Plato. Plato can't seem to respond. So it may be that there is a little bit of damage there on Plato's car. We'll keep an eye out for that. Meanwhile, Jordan has got ahead in that little bit of a group. Tom Chilton still leads this race from Tom Onslow Cole in second place. Let's take a look back at this. Now, this is the incident with Jones. Oh, and he's got contact. With, that was the contact with uh, with Jelly. Yeah. Riding uh, behind Shetton with Colin Turkington. And Turkington just trying to stay out of trouble here as Collard hits Jordan. There's a bit of a nudge, and he pushes him out wide. Andrew Jordan tries to cut back in here. Well, doesn't want to lose more than one place. And now Collard's got that position, and Matt Jackson's trying to get past him as well. 
Now, Con oh, Jackson might have an overlap here. He's got it inside. He's going to have the inside turning into Sturties. That was Collard just pushing a little bit uh, naughty, and really, to push uh, Jackson wide and shedding up the inside as well. God, Jack takes advantage. That's that inside line, and Andrew Jordan suddenly finding himself muscled down the field. He's got Stephen Jenny. He's going to have to try and cover now, and that's where it can be a little bit wary, and he's lost that one too. So Andrew Jordan's lost about five places in one go there. He's down to eighth position and he's still uh, having to fight off McNeil. Oh, with the oh, gravel, come on! Come on, and several others. That's Shedden, is it, in the background? I couldn't quite spot. And that, that's changed things. Now Colin Turkington suddenly gained several places. Yeah, and I think that might have been Onslow Cole coming back onto the circuit. Now, there's one of the Arcus cars pulled off. I guess he must have had a blown engine or something, and uh, that's what the oil is. Yeah, there's oil at Paddock Hill Bend, we gather, from the teams. Oil at Paddock Hill Bend, which is causing problems. Giovanardi has got smoke trailing from his car. Giovanardi's in trouble. Smoke pouring off the Vauxhall. Safety car is coming out. And my goodness, this series is coming to another dramatic end. That's Onzo Cole that's gone off initially. Um, and then you've got uh, Collard. Steve Collard going off as well. And that was on the oil of somebody, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and somebody else went off and drew it. Look, they're all going off. Oh, there's contact at the back as well. Oh. I think that was what did the damage to Giovanardi. Yeah, that it was. was. It was. Yeah, Giovanardi and Jordan made contact on the oil as they went through. Ooh. And that's, uh, as a result, yeah, it was Andrew Jordan that he hit. Ah, that's the oil going down. Martin Bell dropping the oil. The engine's blown up. In the background, you can see them starting to go. If the camera stays there, they'll all fly off. <laughs> oh, that is horrible. Coming through Paddock Hill Bend, one of the most daunting corners anywhere yeah. in the country. This is uh, Ben in the commentary box to Fabrizio. Fabrizio, what a very strange race. And what about the oil at Paddock Hill Bend? <laughs> ah, it's incredible because there was no, no advice about the hoist. So five cars just came in the corner, flat out, normally is. And we slept on the hoist. We came over all, all in the gravel. <laughs> We couldn't see anything in the camera, you can see, it was impossible, like a fog. Anyway, yeah, my, my race was pretty good, but start from the back, I couldn't make better. I had a good, a good fun with Jason a few couple of times, so it's okay. The race has been brought to a conclusion, and it is Tom Chilton, therefore, who takes the final win of the 2008 season, his first victory in over three years, and that is just wonderful. His last victory was in a Honda. It was when he was with the Arena team in 2005, and it was in uh, September of 2005. So three years down the road, Tom Chilton has done what we've expected him to do so many times. But Tim, good result, and he deserved it. He did deserve it. He made a great start. He led from the front. He knew it was a good opportunity. Don't forget, he started third, made a brilliant start, and uh, led every lap of the race. Didn't go off himself on the oil. Onslow Cole did. A well-controlled drive. He is good. Look at the elation there. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, he's going to dent the roof. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Tom. Great drive. So, Chilton wins it. Stephen Kane, a superb second as well, taking advantage of Onslow Cole's mishap on the oil at the end there. Matt Jackson takes fourth place, but with Colin Turkington fifth right behind him, that should be enough for Turkington to win the independence. Collard in sixth, Andrew Jordan in seventh, Matt Neal in eighth, then Gordon Shedden in the top ten there as well, and Mike Jordan, what we think should probably be his final race as a driver, in tenth place in the points once again. And outside of the points is Giovanardi. Uh, unfortunately, Fabrizio Giovanardi just outside the points, finishing in 11th with Turner uh, behind him, uh, just in 12th place. That has been a long, long time. Oh, it's been three years. Yeah, I've had a million podiums, I swear. And every time I'm leading the race, I've had punches, gearboxes, engines, like someone hit me off. And finally, I strung it together, finally got the win. It just feels so good. It's, yeah. it's just like lift that, that sort of devil off your shoulder, yeah. flick it off. Well, Matt, you came here in fourth position overall, and you, you're finishing in second. What a result! You know, it's uh, <laughs> great for you know BMW Dealer Team UK and Accident Exchange. It's uh, you know it's a fantastic result, and uh, we started the season well, and we, I think we left Brands Hatch at the start of the year in second, and um, well, we'll be leaving today in second, which is uh, which is when it matters. Going into this, we said, "Oh, keep an eye on Jason just as an outside bet," but uh, he didn't come through. Picked up some damage, I think, and uh, well, it, it went in our favour. Colin, 
well done, independent champion. That's what you wanted to walk away with, and that's what you've got. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. You know, that was the priority for the weekend to, to retain that, that title, you know, and I'm so pleased for everybody at Team RAC. You know, coming in 22 points ahead is, is a nice cushion, but, you know, Matt was flying today, so we just had to, to really keep it steady and not let him get too far away. So I'm absolutely thrilled. I finished higher than I did last year in the Drivers' Championship, and again, to retain the title is perfect. So Tom Chilton gets the win, but these are the final standings in the championship. Giovinardi wins it, but from Matt Jackson in second place, 36 points behind. Jason Plato demoted down to third with Colin Turkington in fourth. And we can check the independent driver's standings and it's Colin Turkington who's won that again. 319 points from Matt Jackson and Adam Jones third in the petrol Seat. But today we salute Fabrizio Giovinardi and Vauxhall on their back-to-back -back British Touring Car Championships. From Janie and me and all the ITV Sport team here at Brands Hatch, it's goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> 